danger. She's just an angel in jeans in her terrible teens. She's a gal all her pals call Ginger. Just one small dent on the right front fender. Your fault? Well, of course not. Men drivers. Did you call a cop? I didn't have to. It was a police car. Oh, I told them. If they'd been cruising around the way they were supposed to, instead of having their car parked, it wouldn't have bumped into them. That's logical. Liz, why do you suppose Mr. Carroll ever married me? You're pretty. Why? He's a research physicist exploring the secrets of outer space, and I can't even find my door keys in my handbag. You're well matched. He can't find the rockets he shoots off. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, he phoned about a half hour ago. From Canaveral? From the airport. He's back? Wonderful. I didn't expect him until late tonight. Well, he ought to be here in a few minutes. He's not going to the office? No. Says you want to spend the afternoon at the house and get some rest. A nice, quiet afternoon with Ginger. Hello? Anybody home? Hi, darling. How did it go? Great. But I am glad to be home. Tired? Well, it was a little bit hectic, but uh, now I can get some peace and quiet. Sure you can. Uh, better. Got a lot of work to do. Hi, Mr. Carroll. Welcome home. Well, thank you, Liz. Glad you called from the airport. We're having a special dinner for you, my Scandinavian chicken pot pie. And I'm going to make your favorite dessert. Liz, the girls and I are on a diet. All right. No dessert. Liz, I'm not on a diet. You are now. <laughs> How are the girls? Joan's about the same, but I'm worried about Virginia. She's been very quiet. Ginger's up to something. Nothing serious, I'm sure. Just plotting to take over the family. Well, she's been doing that since she was a year old. Or haven't you noticed? If it wasn't for your wife and me, we'd all be indentured slaves. <laughs> I don't know what either of you is talking about. Simply that in the years to come, if you get any more progressive in your attitude toward Ginger, you're going to be asking her permission to go to work morning. She's right. You've always let her tease or bully you into doing or having whatever she wanted. And I've got the psychological scars to prove it. You know that's true, Mr. Carroll. This isn't a criticism, darling. No, of course it's not. It's an inquisition. <laughs> and isn't it interesting how three people can have two such diametrically opposed opinions? Fascinating. How do you account for it? The constant irreconcilable war between male and female logic. Hello, everybody. Dad! Joan. Oh, when did you get home? Just now. Where's Ginger? Oh, she went out to the garage to get a file. Help some lady escape from prison. What was your call from the Canaveral? Very exciting. you finished? Welcome home, Pop. Mm. Thank you. Would you mind getting up now? Sure. <laughs> hey, did you see that dreamy Von Braun in Canaveral? Yeah, I saw Dr. Von Braun. Now there's a mouse who's really off his launching pad. <laughs> Virginia, pick up your sweater. Where are you going, Liz? Out to base the Brussels sprouts. <laughs> What's this, Mom? Oh, it's a new cocktail dress. We're going to a very fancy sit-down dinner tomorrow night at the Blake. The kind where they serve a clear soup with a slice of lemon floating on top. Oh, <laughs> you're funny, Pop. I'm black and blue. Way out, Mom. 
boy. Am I glad you're home. Well, I don't see why you bought it. You've got thousands that look just like it. I'm a collector. When your mother wants an opinion on what she should buy, you'll be the first one she'll ask. You feel all right, Pop? Yeah, I feel fine. Why? You act like your wig zipper came undone. What? It's what happens first before the lid begins to flap. <laughs> Now, after this conversation, it's difficult to believe that I spent four days with Dr. Von Braun, and I understood every word he said. You're right, Pop. You're on. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. I've got to go now. Where? To meet Eddie after basketball practice. We've got to make the final arrangements. Who dies? <laughs> Tomorrow's the big night. Oh. Eddie and I are driving up to Madison to see Frankie. He's doing a one-night stand. Not in my car. No, Daddy. Eddie's getting his father's car. Bye. 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 To my track shoes. Not in the living room. Oh. <laughs> Would you please drop the other shoe? That's a nice thing to teach a child. Well, she had one shoe. The other shoe was. Thank you, Lizzie. You're welcome. I'd hate for you to have bad news. Last <laughs> minute basketball game yesterday. Our team was one point behind. We had the ball. They were trying to get it down the court. The kids were yelling and screaming. Everybody was hot and wild. Time. What happened? And he broke away from in the basket. Somebody fired him a pass. And then he won the game. Nope. It went right through his fingers, and we blew the game by one point. <laughs> Isn't that a sir? Well, it's at least a switch. Go, go, go! Oh, Agnes! Didia! What? Isn't there something you can do or somewhere you can go? Like Tibet. Or, or outer Mongolia. Gee, Pop, you sure are nervous today, huh? Yeah. And I can't imagine why. Must be the tension of working around rockets and missiles and all that kooky stuff. My darling, compared to you, a rocket launching countdown is like a weekend in a rest home. Oh, I get it, Pop. I don't have to be blasted off. Boom, 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 boom. So long, Mom. They say boys are worse at that age. Hi, baby. Hi, Eddie. How's practice? Never mind that. We've got a hot problem. What is it? I asked my father for the car tomorrow night, and he said no. Eddie, I've been counting on this for a month. If I don't get to see that show, I'll die. Could we make the scene in your father's car? Not a chance. They're using it. Eddie, I'm so disappointed. Maybe, maybe if I asked your father for the car. There's only one person in our family that could get that car away from Dad. You, you mean Ginger? <laughs> I, I'd rather not go, honey. Why? You ask her to help us get to Madison, we could wind up on Mars. <laughs> then she might even want to come with us. You know the way she yells, screams, and carries on? Yesterday, I dropped the pass in the game. She yelled... Hi! Fingers. Why the big loom? Oh, Eddie can't get his father's car for tomorrow night. Well, let me give this some thought. <laughs> no, don't, don't forget it. I, I don't really want to go anyway. I enjoy problems. Bye, Joe. Shouldn't have breathed a word. Oh, I forgot to say goodbye to you, you great big beautiful goofball. <laughs> You know, she's the only person in the world who can make me cry. Joan! Oh, 
Ginger, why do you always do things like that? I've got a marvelous plan. There. It's finished. What is it? That's how I see you. That's grounds for divorce. I like it. Oh, John has something to ask you. Oh? What is that? That is your father. You never loved better, Pop. Thank you. You're on. Um, well, I've been thinking, Dad. And I don't want to borrow your car anymore. She wants her own car. So do I. So if you'd advance us next year's allowance, we could buy a car. What do you run it on? Oh, we'd find a way. No. Well, I should have my own car. I agree with you. You should. You should have your own money, but you don't. You're being arbitrary. What does arbitrary mean? Don't change the subject, Pop. <laughs> Girls, the answer is an unqualified no. Well, I'll just have to leave home. Goodbye. Bye. If Joan had a car, it would take a terrible burden off your hands. If you both left home, it would take an even greater burden off my hands. Pop, I'll never leave you. That's the most harrowing news I've had since you took up painting. <laughs> I thought it was Dad. No, it's me. And boy, are you in great shape. Sure I am. You're not going to stop now. What are you talking about? All you have to do is pack a bag and start to leave. Really? What else is new? No courage, huh? That's right. I'm a 17-year-old coward for the FBI. I know what we'll do. No, no, Ginger, please. Just do me a favor and forget about the whole thing. I'm going to get you to Madison, dead or a lot. No, Ginger! I don't understand it. There's nothing to understand. Ed Hoffman's car is in the garage. So we're picking them up and taking them to the Blake tonight. That's why we can't give Joan the car. But I promised Joan I'd get her a ride tonight, and I never break my word. You shouldn't have promised. She's a crusader. Mom, who else will be at the Blake's tonight besides you and the Hoffmans? The Martins, the Simpsons, the Thompsons. Why? Twelve, huh? Uh-huh. How about if we switch the party from the Blake's to here? Why not? Liz, twelve for dinner. Virginia. No, sit down. What? Child is absolutely wild. No, huh? Darling. It's the Blake's party. You just can't switch it to another house. Bet I could. I'll bet you could, too, but you're not going to. Oh, boy! I just had a great idea! Bye! <laughs> Darling, maybe we could. No. Oh, Mr. Carroll, maybe it wouldn't be too much trouble. No, no. Well, but I think No. That... She got herself into this. Let's see how she gets herself out. <laughs> $6,200. Hmm. We've got good-looking hubcaps. Oh, thank you. How fast will she go? <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> uh, aren't, uh, aren't you just a little too young to drive a car? Oh, it's not for me. It's for my father, Howard Carroll. Oh, is, uh, is your father interested in buying a car? Second car. As a matter of fact, we all discussed it yesterday. Yeah, just came down to a question of whether or not to pay cash. It does 110 miles an hour. Mmm, not bad. Did your father ever talk about this car? Uh-huh. 
and I have a great deal of influence with him. What did you say your address was? 217 Maple. 217 Maple. How about a trial spin? Oh, I couldn't do that unless your father is with you. Uh, why don't we um, drive home and get him? No. But do you ever take people for long rides at night? Uh, well, then, what did you have in mind? My sister. <laughs> Little girl, don't you think you better run along? All right. And I'll get back to you later. <laughs> play baseball? We're short a man. What position? Right field. Now, you want to catch? I want to pitch. We already got a pitcher. Oh, me. You catch and I pitch. Okay. No, I guess I can't. Why not? Have to do something. Too bad. Sorry to break up the game. That's all right. We haven't got a ball anyway. <laughs> hey, why don't you go to my house and tell Liz to give you one of my baseballs? Okay, thanks. You want a ride? Sure do, but not for myself. <laughs> That's the only night Frankie will be there, so I just have to get Joan and Eddie to Madison. I told you it's 44 miles round trip at nine cents a mile. How much would that be both ways? Uh, $3.96. Got something a little more expensive? It's a perfectly good car, Virginia. I'm sure, and it's marvelous. It seems so cheap. Well, it's not. The last price I heard was 6200 To rent a car? No. That's when I was thinking of buying. Um, well, we have the big cars that go for 12 cents a mile. That's about uh, $5. I'll take that. My guests go first class. You're a real sport. Now, let's see. With uh, mileage, insurance, and rental fees, that'll be... Rental fee? Uh, thirteen ninety-six. What have you got for 680? Nothing. How's my credit? I'll tell you what we do. You take the 680. You know I get a generous allowance for a girl my age. I'll get a job delivering newspapers in the mornings and one after school someplace, and I'll tell everybody to send the money straight to you. And instead of 1396, I'll pay you a flat $14. <laughs> Mr. Simpson, if I don't do everything I said, you can sue my father. Virginia. Please. I'd like to help you, but I'm sorry I can't. Not here. Well, thanks anyway, sir. Gee, the world of business sure is hard-hearted, isn't it, Mr. Simpson? <laughs> Why don't you go over the field and play ball with the kids? You can play. They're using my ball. I don't like sports. Fred, Jimmy Hall said you don't like sports because you're rich. Is that right? I have some money. Could you lend me $11? What collateral you got? My father. When did you pay it back? In about a month. Cost you 200% interest. I don't care. Can I have it? No. Why not? Because I haven't got $11. You're a real pal, Red. Why? Because there aren't many people that would lend you money if they had it. What else are friends for? Thank you, Uh, Mr. Hoffman, please. Oh, oh, uh, Mr. Hoffman, uh, Bert West. Well, it's about your car. I thought your main trouble was in, in your automatic transmission, but she said... No. No, girl. No. No, I don't drink, but uh, I'm a little upset. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Hoffman. I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused. Uh, Mr. Hoffman, I can't cope. Here. Mr. Hoffman, Ginger Carroll, we've got a crisis on your hands. Your car's here, and Joan and Eddie just have to get to Madison. Mr. Hoffman, are you laughing? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you see, Mom and Dad have to go to the blanks tonight, and cars are so expensive to rent, they'll never get to see the show. You understand. Mr. West just isn't used to me. <laughs> right. He wants to speak to you. Yes, sir. That's impossible, Mr. Hoffman. I know, but I don't have any help. Mr. Hoffman, I told you Monday. I know, I know, I don't know where to get another mechanic, and if I could, I don't think we could get it out in time. All right, all right, Mr. Hoffman. I'll try. <laughs> You keep unscrewing things. Sure, but I might hit on the trouble. You've been here just two hours, and this car's in worse shape than when I got it. Have you ever thought it might just be out of gas? Out. Out! A woman's place is not in a garage. Okay. Hi, Liz. What's the matter with you? Why? You didn't slam the door. I couldn't get a car for Joan. Virginia! What have you been doing? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> Look at you. I'll go and clean up, Mother. Dear Diary, today was the day of my great failure. I believed I could do anything or make anything happen. It's hard to face being wrong, but then I guess life is hard. Come in. Hi. Hi, Pop. Well, how'd things go today? Failed. The guy did didn't work? No. Nope. Oh, I'm sorry. Had something interesting happen to me today. Maybe I can help. Yeah, maybe you can. Suddenly, uh, I don't feel like driving tonight. So Joan can have the car. I love you, Pop. But no thanks. Oh, go ahead. Tell her that you talked me out of it. We'll get to the Blake somehow. No. That just wouldn't be fair. I wanted to do it myself. I understand. I'm proud of you. You don't care from a failure? You're not a failure. Only people who don't try are failures. Pop? Hmm? Can I always tell you my secrets? I hope you will, but I'm sure you won't. Why not? Because today I'm the man you love. One of these days I'll just be your father. Look, I don't mind missing the dance, but why do we have to stay home with Ginger? Well, since you couldn't get your dad's car and Mom and Dad were going out, they gave Lizzie the night off. Just think, a whole night of monster sitting. <laughs> Hiya, Butterfingers! <laughs> Hello. Is your father home? Yes. I'd like to give him a demonstration ride. <laughs> Won't you come in? Thank you. <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> my name is Adams. Oh, Mr. Adams, this is Joan and Eddie. Mr. How, do you, Adams. how do you do? Hi, sis. Hi, Mike. Did you get it? Well, I couldn't get the car, but uh, I talked the boss out of one of his trucks. Think the kids will mind? No. They'll go any way they can get there. Good evening, Virginia. I found a car you can have for $6.80. <laughs> a round trip? Both ways. Please come in, Mr. Simpson. I'll get the money. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Simpson, this is Mr. Adams, Joan, and Eddie. How do you? 
it might not be too much trouble. I got great news. Mike borrowed a truck and you can have it. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, Liz and Mike, this is Mr. Simpson, Mr. Adams, Joan, and Eddie. How do you wow. do? <laughs> Mr. Hoffman told me to deliver the car to you. I knew you could do it if you tried. <laughs> Mr. West, this is Mr. Simpson, Mike, Liz, Mr. Adams, Joan, and Eddie. Hi, Hi. Hello. What's going on? Pop, if I tried to explain it to you, you'd never believe it. But why are all these people here? They're all here with cars to take Joan and Eddie to Madison tonight. So I guess I'm not a failure after all. <laughs> <laughs> just one more time with all those cars to choose from how we ended up with the truck ginger trapped me the day she was born darling <laughs> She's an angel in jeans in her terrible teens. She's a gal all about called Ginger. She's also ponytail nice, full of sugar and spice. And her smile has a style all Ginger. She's fun, she'll run, and laugh at the slightest notion. She'll dream, then dream. Look out for the big explosion. Oh, there's no doubt in her mind that the future will find Every day's gonna be just a family size G Climb out, take time out for Ginger